Welcome to Nature Change. I'm Kama Ross. I'm the District Forester serving landowners in Leland Albenzi and Grand Traverse Counties. And today I have a very special guest, Dr. Carmen Medina Mora. And um, she is here today to do Hello. a great re uh, presentation for the Master Gardener Association of Northwest Michigan a little later tonight. But we uh, have her here just a little early to talk to us about the chestnut and your work in the lab down at MSU. Yes, thank you for the introduction. So um, as you know, Nature Change is a, a, a online magazine that helps focus um, uh, what natural resource professionals yes. here in Northern Michigan are, are how we are adapting to climate change. So we, uh, and when we think of what we're gonna do, we are hoping that the American chestnut might be a helpful species for us to introduce up this way. How has your work helped us uh, feel more optimistic about bringing the American chestnut to Northern Michigan and have it, having success? I think the most important part is the knowledge that we have gained and tried to communicate in terms of what the host can bring us in terms of conservation. What are, how diverse is the actual plant in order to adapt to the challenges that Michigan, in this case, climate has. And so it's not only understanding the pathology from the perspective of the tree and the fungus in this case, but also how can these type of trees could replace the dying forest. Mm -hmm. in, in that regards, there will be some characteristics that are unique uh, of the American chestnut, as well as all chestnuts, which are in the castania species. And uh, it would be mainly of what is the goal of the people that are selecting uh, the trees. So either if it's for wildlife, um, we will suggest certain cultivars. Okay, so the, some are gonna be American-Chinese hybrids. Some are gonna be mainly for wildlife food, okay? or even human consumption. And so that we bring into the, our knowledge from the European forests and how they have, those forests have adapted in order to alleviate the impact of the pathogens in the environment. Then we can't eliminate the pathogens, we just have to adapt the environment by providing plants that could sustain the, the challenges. So as we see climate change, um, make differences in our weather and the yes. way trees have to adapt. Yes. By bringing up that southern species, you know, the chestnut might be a little more successful. It could be because although the American chestnut population have declined, and that was very well known since the 1900s based, based on chestnut blight impact, mm -hmm. there are other cultivars that can actually mitigate, fight, the, the pathogen appearance in Michigan. Okay. So we are on, not only dealing with the, the decline of American chestnut in our forests, but there are other trees that are being hampered by pathogens. For example, we are seeing the decline of the oak with the oak wilt mm -hmm. diseases. We're seeing the hemlock dying because the of the aphid yeah. and the beech. And so we do in our laboratory at the moment take care of of basically looking at how we can provide trees that can, again, withstand the pressures of All past instas and abiotic factors. Great. So, so based on your um, experience and all your education, the, what does the research tell you of the changes over the decades and the stresses on the trees? How are, we, how are our forests dealing with those changes that ch climate change has brought forth? I think that it has made us aware of how important is the environment in this triangle. When we are dealing with conservation, we're not dealing only with the environment and its changes, but also the host will have some changes, as well as the pathogens mm -hmm. have some changes. So the more we know about the diversity the plant can provide, a tree in this case can provide, and the diversity of the host and how those interact, we can make better choices. So this is one of the... Uh... Yes, this is actually um, a European-Japanese hybrid. Uh, the importance of this tree is actually a, um, a supreme quadi. It's one of those things that we have actually genetically selected. Um, it is not been manipulated. 
we just found it. So mm. that's it. It's the knowledge that brings the molecular biology and the understanding of the environment that allow us to select those survivors. And so this particular tree is actually a production of another area of technology that is tissue culture and micropropagation. Uh, tissue culture allow us for, in, in this case for this tree, for plants to be cloned and produce roots on their own and survival tends to be better than other options that are, are out there. So by selecting unique organisms, we can produce it in mass, which allow us then to plant the thousands oh, of trees that we, that we need. need. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Right. And just another question about climate change. As these non-native pathogens enter our ecosystem, how does your technology make that easier to track the movement or to do anything to help save some of these species that are going fast? Definitely. Um, not all fungal pathogens can be treated, okay? And in a, in a natural setting, it is not my best top option to be treated uh, with fungicides, for example. But allowing us to detect the fungus at early times okay. and actually detect what fungicides could be favorable mm -hmm. to control the epidemics of fungal pathogens and also how we interact, put these two things together, allow us to actually make better decisions. So what I would say is that um, the replacement or the selection of cultivars that are unique for the certain environment and the certain stressors have allowed us to actually track not only the epidemic, mm -hmm. but track the success of the host. Great. So that's what we do, and um, we're very happy and proud of it. Well, and we are very much appreciate those foresters, my fellow foresters in the field, knowing that the research that's going on in uh, labs like yours that make us more confident to be out here and making recommendations to landowners to be brave and bring back species or treat species. So, yeah, we my, sure appreciate your work. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs>